Hello everyone, welcome to another real-time live drawing using my favorite beginner colored pencil which is the Crayola Colors of the World. So if you are a beginner or, or, or even if you're not a beginner but uh, uh, you want to be able to draw portraits, uh, beautiful portraits without having the need to get or to purchase expensive colored pencils yet because um, especially for beginners I don't encourage um, to purchase artist quality expensive colored pencils yet if you are still uh, practicing or learning colored pencils because it's not going to be worth it uh, but there are colored pencils that you can try and uh, you can improve your skills without spending uh, lots of money on uh, expensive colored pencils uh, and uh, the, this colored pencil, which is Crayola Colors of the World, is what I really suggest, especially for beginners in colored pencils or for those who want to learn colored pencils uh, but uh, do not have the means yet for uh, expensive brands. Because even if this is, as you can see, Crayola, we all know that this is a kid's colored pencils, colored pencils for kids but for some reason this particular version of Crayola which is the colors of the world is uh, I can say a little bit uh, premium compared to the regular uh, Crayola colored pencils because uh, as you can see here in this uh, particular portrait let me focus it uh, for you to see that uh, it doesn't look, the, 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 the product as you can see right here, although it takes some skills uh, to be able to draw uh, realistic portraits but when you have a, a good colored pencil and a good paper even if it's not very expensive as you can see here this uh, is just a Crayola uh, but as you can see with the product and you can see with, the, with the, the ability of this colored pencil to be able to draw realistic portraits detailed portraits like this one right here I think uh, it's going to be easier to learn realism in colored pencils using cheaper colored pencils like this Crayola uh, Colors of the World and uh, I don't know why this is not very popular um, here in the Philippines this is not very popular this particular Crayola for beginners uh, beginners usually use uh, Faber-Castell or they uh, even start with uh, Prismacolor which is not very expensive but still quite pricey in some countries so um, it feels very dry this Crayola but uh, it really uh, fills the tooth of the paper very easily because uh, it's the, the, the lead is very hard that it feels like you can sharpen it very sharp point and surprisingly the tip lasts so there is it's very seldom the need to sharpen the colored pencil i'm using the darkest brown that i can find with the set this is colors of the world so this is all skin tone set so if you if, if you find it hard to pick the right colors that you need to use on the skin tone here this is all skin tone set so the, the colors are all related to each other it feels a little bit like polychromos actually although not as pigmented but uh, compared to the price of the polychromos surprisingly it creates really nice uh, skin tone so I love that Crayola manufactures colored pencils even if for kids manufactures this kind of colored pencils which is dedicated for uh, the realistic skin tone so I uh, like I usually do I like to start uh, from the darkest shadow of the skin tone and uh, of course she is black American so uh, I really need to add darker shadows especially right here there's a nice dark shadow on top of the nostrils right here so the set of the Crayola colors of the world doesn't have uh, the black so I use the black pencil of the regular Crayola colored pencil set and uh, I think I also will need the regular Crayola for some reddish tone some uh, saturated uh, colors that the, the skin tone set doesn't have so the secret with using uh, 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 like this one the kids grade colored pencils is to layer it slowly on the paper because you, you want to be able to like put the, the pigments 
uh, to fill in the tooth of the paper. You see this part right here where, where I put the dark brown. Uh, I'm still not very satisfied with the darkness that the darkest brown on the set of the Crayola Colors of the World can provide with the skin tone. So I would like to add black. But uh, I have the license to add black when I want to be a little bit darker because this is, first of all, this is a kid's grade colored pencil. So the black wouldn't be very, very dark compared to artist quality pencils. So uh, it can add just enough darkness that you want. And um, uh, at the same time, because uh, she has a dark skin tone, so you can just go on and add black. But I made sure that my black is very, very sharp because uh, I don't want to have a difficulty of blending. So can you see how uh, it darkens very, very beautifully on this uh, shadow right here? Before I go on with my next uh, uh, pencil to layer on top of it, this is a layering technique. We're not going to burnish. There's no need because uh, the colored pencil is very, very hard, the tip of the pencil, so the layering is very, very fine. Surprisingly fine for a cheaper brand like this. And then very quickly, I want to go back to my dark brown to put on top of the black to make it more, uh, what do you call this? Because I don't want to, the, the shadow to look flat, so I want to be able to block in properly. As you can see here, I put the black right here as well. As you can see, it's very, very dark. But I'm gonna layer more colors on top of that to make it more uh, fuller and more realistic. But I, I just wanna take advantage of this dark brown to just draw some skin details. There are some tiny wrinkles on this part. Now I'm going to be a little bit lighter. This is like a reddish uh brown which is uh, a little bit lighter with the pencils that with the pencil that i used a while ago this is the deep rose so as you can see it's a bit reddish tone so the goal of the layering technique is to be able to achieve smooth skin tone while layering many colors on top of each other using circular motion very sharp point and light pressure do not attempt to put hard pressure while you are layering because uh, it's going to be difficult to blend especially when your pencils are not very sharp so this is the second layer the reddish darker uh, lighter brown called the deep rose with this uh, Crayola set so uh, yeah if you're wondering it's really possible to create quality as uh, portraits using lesser quality colored pencils um, this is where I started actually uh, I started using not Crayola but the Faber-Castell uh, classic colored pencils I uh, really uh, th that colored pencil is I can say as a beginner taught me a lot with the skin tone with realistic portraits Aside from, I couldn't afford expensive pencils yet uh, before, like around, you know, five years ago, I think. But when I finally uh, was able to afford Polychromos or Prismacolor, um, I can say that I already have enough knowledge with uh, the layering, with building your shadows, achieving correct values of the skin tone. Choosing colors, the most especially choosing the right colors to combine for a specific reference photo. So I learned all of that using kids grade colored pencils. And uh, uh, I, I just wish that I was able to find this Crayola Colors of the World earlier when I was practicing. But uh, uh, even if I discovered it when I already have Polychromos or uh, Prismacolor, uh, I really enjoy using it actually. And I'm using it like I'm using Polychromos. The same application, the same technique that I would do using expensive uh, pencils. And as you can see, it's turning out really nice. Can you see this very dark shadow right here and here uh, on top of the nostrils? I want to put this deep rose or this reddish brown on top of it. 
and uh, I'm surprised to see that it blends actually it, it, it while adding layers it gradually blends itself and uh, for uh, colored pencils like this for kids colored pencils it's really surprising but of course I don't want to take away with the paper that I use right here I use a Strathmore Bristol paper which is one of the best uh, papers to use with colored pencils but uh, if you are a beginner and you cannot afford to buy expensive papers you can try less expensive papers just uh, make sure that the paper that you use has textures or tooth. Um, uh, a lot of uh, beginners believe that to be able to make skin tone smooth, you need to use smooth papers. But that is not true. Smooth papers will not allow you to layer on top of other layers. So, in other words, it will not. You will not be allowed to do multi layering, which is the, the multi layering is the number one the number one way to be able to achieve realistic skin tone so if the paper won't allow will allow you one to two layers that is not a good paper so the paper has to be textured not not rough of course finely textured with nice very fine tooth because uh, the texture or the tooth of the paper is what's going to allow you to create smoother skin tone so uh, why because the tooth of the paper allows multi-layering which as you can see here, while I'm, I'm adding more layers, it becomes smoother because I was able to feel the, the, the tooth of the paper with pigments. Unlike smoother papers, won't allow you to do just like this. So uh, if you can, you can try the Canson Mitientes. That is not a very expensive paper but has very nice fine tooth or texture to use for multi-layering. The white, you choose the white because the Canson Mitientes has many tones. It is actually a pastel paper with many colors and tones, so you just it has a white paper, so you just choose the white. Or you can try the uh, what's that paper? The mixed media one. I forgot. Uh, uh, Fabriano, rather Fab Fabriano mixed media paper is a very nice textured paper. Also, don't use uh, what you call this the cold pressed or or any watercolor paper which is too rough for colored pencils. But there are colored pencil papers. I think the hot pressed are the ones with a finer texture. Not as rough as regular uh, watercolor papers. But uh, if you are going to ask me uh, the cheapest and the best Strathmore paper, I th I'm going to suggest the Strathmore 300 series. Th that is the cheapest. The 300 series vellum surface. Choose the vellum surface. It's uh, very nicely textured and with the tooth are just nice for colored pencil drawings. Okay, now I'm gonna layer a uh, greenish tone right here. This is, uh, this is called the bronze yellow, but uh, for me this is a nice uh, green, greenish dark green tone. Like an earth green right here. Um, because based on my reference photo, there, are, there is a, some shade of green on her skin tone actually most of human skin tone has touch of green so if you are trying to achieve realistic skin tone don't hesitate to use any earth greens light greens for the skin tone especially if you're gonna use brighter colors like red or orange because they are perfect complementary the greenish tone with the bright skin tone colors it's somehow like the green is toning down the bright colors and the saturation is just really nice toned down uh, skin tone which is very nice in terms of the portrait so there is a little bit of a concentration of the greenish shadow right here on the side so for especially for beginners who find it very difficult to pick the right colors to use do not stress so much on the colors you can just um you know trust your instinct just pick uh some colors and just look closely at your reference if you miss out on a tone you can just adjust you can just go back to your to your set and pick the colors that you think you need to add you can just go back and forth and uh, you will you will commit some mistakes but that is really okay it's okay to commit mistakes because you will learn you will learn from them those mistakes will so those mistakes will teach you more lessons in terms of the portraiture because you will know what not to do next time 
so just don't stop don't be frustrated just continue to learn and you will be good in terms of coloring or in terms of building skin tones with colored pencils the more important thing that you need to study is the values or the shadows the darkness and the lightness of your shadows so there are shadows which are very dark right here and here there are mid tone shadows right here at the side of the nose there there is the light tones the one that are near the highlights and then the highlights because if you don't build your shadows dark enough uh, it will not be as realistic or photorealistic but we're not trying to achieve photorealism we're just trying to achieve realism actually I can see some blue tone right here under the nostrils and I might add blue later on so just you really need to be observant with your uh, in terms of uh, uh, the colors that you need to use just keep observing while drawing just keep on observing your reference photo and then I want to put very light of this green on this part and right here in the middle of the bridge and now I realized that I needed to establish this dark shadow right here in between the eyebrows and to blend it a little bit as well using this dark gray colored pencil so now I can uh, apply a little bit of pressure just to blend and to establish the dark shadow you can see uh, it's not very very dark but it blends and establish the shadow because uh, to blend the, the light shadow I might use the white or the flesh later on but with the dark shadow I don't want to use the white or any lighter colored pencil because I don't want them to lighten up now I'm gonna layer this nice golden brown right here to add a little bit of a uh, light yellowish tone and uh, I'm going lighter and lighter using lighter pencils as I go along with the layering. Now I can add a little bit of pressure already to blend everything, but not very, very hard pressure. But when you, uh, when you don't have enough layers yet, you cannot add uh, pressure. So now I can add pressure because uh, I know that uh, I was able to put uh, some layers already so here aside from toning the skin tone I'm blending them a little bit blending means that uh, you no longer see the tooth of the paper with wax based colored pencils like Prismacolors it's called burnishing but uh, with harder core pencils like this one or with any other uh, cheaper uh, oil based or any other kids colored pencils with hard uh, lead like this one uh, you just multi-layer and then you you just blend using the pencils that you are using by applying a little bit of pressure and surprisingly with this kids colored pencil Crayola colors of the world that I'm using uh, I don't have uh, really a hard I don't experience uh, you know a hard time in terms of the blending I know most beginners I understand that uh, you struggle a lot when it comes to blending the colored pencils but when you do it the right way in terms of the layering when you layer very patiently uh, you, when you go layer after layer uh, and uh, using light pressure and you go slowly when you build your skin tone and you take a lot of you, you give a lot of patience with your work uh, as you can see here the blending is not very very difficult to do actually I like the smoothness already even if I'm not applying hard pressure can you see it it's uh, really nice and smooth it feels like it, it doesn't feel like I'm using a uh, kids colored pencil right here so uh, another advice for beginners is just draw 
what you see on your reference photo and i see some blue tones on the dark sh on the on my darkest shadows right here and i want to take advantage also to blend it further using this bluish color this is called the slate but this is a very nice dark uh, blue right here not very dark this is like a pale dark blue i'm not very familiar with the name it's called the slate slate blue i think so uh this part is where I added the black, the dark brown, the dark, I blended with the dark gray, but I also put some bright colors on top of this. So now I'm going to mix everything and tone it with a little bit of this bluish uh, colored pencil right here. If you see purple on the skin tone, just draw with purple. If you see green, if you see like orange or even red, if you see it on your reference, just draw, just be faithful with your reference photo. That is, um, what I'm always saying, especially if you are trying to achieve realistic skin tone. And here under the nostrils, is it the nostrils right here? So there is a very nice significant uh, blue tone on this dark shadow, very dark shadow right here under the nose. So I'm putting a little bit of a heavy, heavy to medium, a medium to heavy pressure right here because I already added lots of layers here. So now I can just tone it. Uh, and blend it at the same time using this nice dark blue right here and even here I want to add a little bit of blue tone now it's time to add a uh, warmer tone and uh, I think it's going to blend the layers even more with this nice orange tone right here it's not part of the the skin tone set of the colors of the world this is uh, the regular crayola because the, the colors of the world doesn't have this saturated warm tones like this so i just grabbed it on my regular crayola set because i want to add some saturation in terms of the warmth of the color And here on the transition between the dark and the light right here, there is a nice warm shadow or tone right here. I think this uh, light rose or light medium rose right here, which has a very nice pinkish but a little bit dark pink color that is a little bit fleshy right here is going to be my... Uh, I think I'm ready to blend or to add a little bit more pressure or like a heavier pressure this time to blend the uh, particularly the mid-tones right here on the side of the nose and here uh between the darkest shadows and the, the mid-tone right here so again this is a dry uh colored pencil it's not going to be creamy like the oil based or like the prismo colors but uh, this you will not find it hard to blend this crayola colors of the world so the side of the nose right here and, uh, I want to try to as much as possible get the read already of the tooth of the paper you need the tooth of the paper uh, during the layering process but you, with your final output you don't want to see them so you don't need them towards the end of your drawing you want to as much as possible make them not visible on the final output of the drawing. Now the highlights of the nose is, is not very intense so I'm gonna put a very light layer of this color, the, the medium rose, on the highlighted parts because uh, they seem to have a very uh, nice very light pinkish tone and but I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, define the highlights with the white later on but uh, since the highlights on the nose is not very sharp, I want to layer some of this color right here. So uh, when you when I finally use the white, I want to define everything together. I want to make some parts lighter, so I can just use the white pencil for that purpose. But at this time, I just want to blend. Now I want to add a little bit more pressure right on this part between the dark shadow and the mid-tone right here.
I realized that uh, I need to blend with this very nice, very light almond color right here. It's, most, it's almost like white because it's already very light on some parts of the nose. So I'm satisfied with uh, the blending of the dark shadows. Now I'm going to blend the lighter shadows and the mid-tones, fully blend them using the white. I'm going to start with the lightest shadow right here. Um, it's actually a highlight but not very intense. And I want to lighten up this part right here. So I'm going to put a little bit of pressure using the white pencil. And uh, I think this part is a little bit lighter on the reference so I can just adjust the lighting using the white pencil and at the same time blending fully blending the skin tone so on this part right here I'm pressing very hard I'm playing applying very hard pressure right here because I want to make it a little bit lighter and then I'm gonna go upward and continue to apply pressure it's gonna blend and at the same time lighten this uh, supposed to be a highlighted part of the nose So I want to be able to show some of the details by putting the white in between the details of the skin tone to make them a little bit, to make them pop a little bit on the paper like these tiny wrinkles and freckles right here. So you can make them a little bit visible by putting white around the skin details. So I pressed a bit hard so that the tip of the white has uh, so I need to resharpen my white That's another real-time color pencil drawing tutorial just for you. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask on my comment section. I appreciate your support to my channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.